Now, for more insights, our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sindhan Sibyl, is joining us live, and he has been clo closely following the story for days. Sindhan, thanks for joining us. Now, we know that the Nepal parliament is set to approve and legitimize this controversial map. So what can we expect, and how will India react? Well, uh, Priyanka, in a short while from now, the parliament session will start where uh, the voting will take place uh, on uh, the constitutional amendment, which will uh, give a constitutional backing to uh, the map, which is in the coat of arms of the Nepal's uh, symbol. Uh, this happened last week when the, the bill was uh, presented for discussion. And uh, after 72 hours, which finished, uh, there will be a formal voting today. And it is expected to be passed, given the fact that it got a unanimous uh, backing in the lower house of the Nepali parliament. Once it's passed in the lower house of the Nepali parliament, it will go in the upper house where the same process will happen. And then thereafter, uh, the president of Nepal will uh, sign on the law and it becomes a formal law giving a constitutional backing. But uh, what will be New Delhi's reaction? It will be the same reaction uh, as has been the first reaction when for the first time last month, we know that Nepali government issued the map. New Delhi clearly said that this is something violative of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of India. And Right. This is something that New Delhi does not take very kindly and that was a sharp reaction and since then there have been uh, the, the, the government in Nepal calling for talks with New Delhi but New Delhi has clearly said that it is up to the government in Nepal to create a positive atmosphere and by going forward with the law in the parliament it is definitely not creating a positive atmosphere for any talks uh, deepening the row, the border row between New hmm. Delhi and Kathmandu. Right, now it seems that the relationship between India and Nepal has already come under plenty of strain over this border a dispute and now the Indian Army's chief has said that these relations will continue to remain strong with Nepal so what really lies ahead for these two neighbors Well, if you look at the government-to-government -government level uh, relationship between uh, New Delhi and uh, Nepal, uh, they have gone through ups and downs. This is, of course, a, a downward period, uh, uh, something which has been seen, uh, all, uh, not been seen for almost uh, two or three decades. And the fact that the Nepali government has come out with a map, it's only going to exacerbate the current uh, row, the deepening uh, and worsening government-to-government -government, uh, uh, relationship. But if you look at the people-to-people -people relationship, it's, it's something that is civilizational in nature and this has been reiterated right. both by the Indian Army Chief today and the Indian Ministry of External Affairs last week when a question was asked on the border route, the answer was on the civilizational, the shared cultural heritage between the two countries and we know that uh, how New Delhi has been describing the relationship uh, in the past as well, it has been saying that it's a roti beti ka rishta, there are people who are married across the border and uh, nobody actually knows where Nepal's finish and where India uh, begins because of uh, the open and long porous border, something that right. the government in Nepal does not like. But uh, clearly the focus of the government here in India has been on making sure that people to people relationship uh, remains positive and that is why we have seen the comments by the army chief coming today uh, talking about the people to people relationship and of course uh, the relationship between the armies of both the countries. Remember uh, they are Nepalese who are in the Indian army and mm -hmm. have been playing a crucial and an important role. Right, my final question. Now it seems that the timing of this controversial map being legitimized is really suspicious. So why would Nepal want to include these territories into its map now, especially when the world is focused on fighting a pandemic? The, one of the biggest reasons is the fact that, that we have an ultra-nationalist government in Kathmandu, a, a government which is focused on a territorial and sovereign uh, integrity. But of course, the big question is that it, it's a border issue which dates back to 1815. Why now? This is a question which many have been asking and there hasn't been any uh, re uh, uh, answer by the government in Nepal. But one of the big reasons is the fact is to divert what is happening inside in Nepal. We know there are protests happening inside Nepal. Massive protests in fact happening in many cities in Nepal against uh, the handling of the COVID crisis and also corruption charges against uh, the KP Sharma Oli government. So in an attempt to divert the internal dynamics, uh, the government there is focusing on something that will of course get a unanimous backing because anybody will be supporting the, the territorial integrity of a country and they just have come out with uh, this, uh, this, uh, this issue, this territorial issue and now focusing on that rather than focusing on the COVID 
prices. Another big reason it seems uh, is uh, the China effect. We have seen increased right. Chinese presence uh, or Chinese role in uh, South Asia, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's Nepal. And uh, this is something that has been talked about uh, off and on by the Indian government here. We know the comments by uh, the army chief who clearly said that uh, the current border row, it seems, is happening at the behest of someone. He did not take any name, but it seems it's, uh, the, his, his pointing, his, his mention was clear at, uh, at Beijing. Right. All right, Sadhan, thank you so much for all your insights. We'll come back to you for more if this controversial map does, in fact, uh, achieve legal recognition in Nepal. And now let's move on to our next story. Now, parts of the Chinese capital of Beijing have been locked down due to new COVID-19 cases, which have been linked yet again to a meat market. The virus cluster has increased fears of a second wave of COVID-19 infections. Authorities in Beijing have temporarily shut down the Shinfadi wholesale meat market following a rise in locally transmitted coronavirus infections. Officials said that Beijing has entered a wartime emergency mode as 45 people working at this market tested positive for coronavirus and they were all asymptomatic. Authorities have said that more than 10,000 people linked to the market will now be undergoing the nucleic acid test for COVID-19. As of now, it is not clear how this virus spread but the shops in the Chinese capital removed salmon from their shelves after the virus causing COVID-19 was discovered on chopping boards, which are used for cutting the imported fish at the market. Meanwhile, 11 residential estates close to the market have now been sealed and the government has also dropped any plans to reopen primary schools because of the recent spike in cases. The first COVID-19 case was reported at a seafood market as well in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December last year.